Hello children, welcome once again to the next module of the topic health and hygiene. So in today's module, we are going to learn about diseases. What is the meaning of diseases? Uh, a disease is what it is broadly referred to any condition in which the body is not able to function properly. Or uh, we can say that it is a condition that prevents the body from working normally. Now, do you know diseases can be broadly divided into two categories? The first one is communicable diseases and the second one is non-communicable diseases. So in the uh, next slide, we are going to learn one by one about these two types of diseases. So children, let's study the modes of transmission that how a communicable disease gets transferred from an infected person to a healthy person. There are, there are certain agents or you know ways by which uh, the transmission takes place. The first one is through direct contact. So if any healthy person comes in contact with an infected person uh, uh, regarding its you know blood or saliva, the healthy person can get infected. Now the second one is through vectors. Vectors are nothing but these are the agents or the carriers which carries the germs from the infected body, the person to the uh, healthy person and these vectors are mostly an animal or an insect and how does it get transferred through usually through their bites and uh, examples of few diseases which are being spread through vectors are uh, malaria okay dengue as well as plague the third way by which uh, the diseases spread is through contaminated food and water so if the food and water gets contaminated with germs and if people uh, you know consume such food and water they get sick you know by eating them so and uh, the diseases caused by consuming contaminated food and water are um, diarrhea okay typhoid jaundice cholera and various digestive disorders now the fourth one is airborne now there are certain germs which are spread through air for example when someone coughs or sneezes as you can see in this image there are you know uh, several water droplets uh, comes out when a infected person coughs or sneezes which we cannot see through our naked eye so when that water droplets you know uh, enters in uh, somehow into the healthy person's uh, body then what happened the uh, person gets infected by those germs and the fifth one is through indirect contact now there are various pathogens you know which are present on the surfaces when that surface uh, uh, once came in contact with the infected person and those pathogens if any how enters into the healthy person naturally the person will get infected so these are certain ways by which you know the germs get transmitted from a infected person to a healthy person so the first type of disease is what the communicable disease so what are communicable disease communicable disease are you know spread from one person to the other now such type of diseases are said to be catching catching means what infectious or contagious and these diseases are caused by germs which can also be called as pathogens now examples of pathogens include the viruses, bacteria, protozoa, and fungi. And these are also called as microorganisms because they are so minute that they cannot be seen through our naked eye. For children, let's know few examples of communicable diseases. Now, due to bacteria, the diseases caused are cholera, pneumonia, tuberculosis, typhoid, plague, and meningitis. Then, due to virus, 
the diseases caused are common cold, flu, polio, chicken pox, measles and AIDS as well as uh, by protozoa. Uh, the disease caused is malaria as well as dysentery. Then the next upcoming slides I'll be sharing few symptoms of few diseases which are quite common in human beings. So the first one is cholera. It's a bacterial disease here which is caused due to consumption of contaminated food and water. And what is the symptom of uh, cholera? There is a watery motion okay, along with vomiting. Now the next one is Typhoid. Now, typhoid is what? It is an infectious bacterial fever, which is also caused due to the consumption of contaminated food and water. And what are the symptoms of typhoid? Uh, there will be a stomach ache accompanied by what? Fever, high fever will be there. Then loose motion as well as weakness. After typhoid, the next bacterial disease is tuberculosis. Tuberculosis is caused due to contaminated air. And do you know children in tuberculosis, the bacteria mainly affects the lungs. Okay. And what are the symptoms of tuberculosis? There will be continuous mild fever, then dry cough for a long time. Then loss of appetite, that is uh, the patient or the uh, person is not uh, willing to eat, okay. Then pain in the chest while breathing. These are few symptoms found in the disease called as tuberculosis. Now the next common disease found in the human beings is what the common cold now common cold is what it's a viral infection of nose and throat now what are the symptoms of common cold in common cold naturally there will be cough sore throat sore throat means what pain or irritation of the throat then runny nose as well as nasal congestion that is the blockage of the nasal passages Now, the next disease caused by virus is flu. Now, it is an infectious disease caused by an influenza virus. So, flu is also called as influenza. Now, what are the symptoms of flu? There will be high fever, runny nose, sore throat, muscle and joint pain, headache, coughing, as well as tiredness. Present slide, children, you can see the image of a child suffering from chicken pox. Now, chicken pox is a common disease caused by virus. Now, and it usually occurs during childhood, normally uh, between the age of 5 to 9 years, okay? But uh, you can get it at any time in your life. What are the symptoms of chicken pox? You know, first of all, there are... Uh, fever, a body ache as well as loss of appetite. Loss of appetite means the person suffering from chicken pox is what will not be willing to eat anything. So it's you know eating capacity decreases and what will happen after infection within one or two days rashes appear. Can you see these rashes here? Yeah. So it begins as red spot which then forms you know blisters blisters are what these are small bubbles okay on the skin which are filled with a watery liquid and it spreads to the rest of the body now the next disease is malaria now malaria is caused by protozoa now what are protozoa protozoa are what they are tiny one celled animals consisting of only one cell that live in moist environments like ponds okay or in a moist soil they can live by themselves or you know they can live inside a bigger plant or animal which acts as a parasite which means that they live on and feed off the plants and animals to survive so here Malaria is caused due to the 
it's written that it's the bite of infected female anopheles mosquito here the infected female anopheles mosquito is only the carrier it's the only the agent and uh, actually it carries that protozoa inside its blood okay so when this infected female anopheles mosquito bites a healthy person that uh, protozoa gets transferred into healthy person and the person will suffer from which disease malaria now what are the symptoms of malaria fever sweating shivering and pain in abdomen or in muscles children can read in book how to prevent the communicable diseases okay the first one is to bathe daily with soap and water why to keep ourselves clean yeah free from germs then drinking water should be clean and pure yes because uh, if the water is contaminated we can suffer from various water borne diseases like typhoid jaundice etc uh then is our surrounding should also be neat and clean yes um water should not uh, stagnate okay in the surroundings because it may cause the breeding ground for mosquitoes and flies that may cause various diseases like malaria dengue etc uh then garbage should be disposed in where in covered dustbins yeah and most important is children should be vaccinated properly against various diseases like tuberculosis hepatitis polio chickenpox tetanus and many more so what is this vaccination uh, it is an you know uh, it's an effective way of preventing many communicable diseases uh, yeah so uh, the vaccinations are given to children uh, in a particular age now vaccines are you know uh, it's made up of small quantities of dead or very weak germs itself yeah of a particular disease and the vaccines are given how either orally or they are injected into the body so what happens when the vaccines enter the body the body produces a substance called as antibody yeah uh, which is ca capable of fighting these weak germs of that disease so uh, these antibodies are like soldiers uh, so and this creates what the immunity uh, against a particular disease so uh, some common vaccines that are given to all children are like polio vaccine to prevent polio then is dpt vaccine to prevent diphtheria pertussis and tetanus and mmr vaccine to prevent measles mumps and rubella this will you will be learning in detail in your higher class uh, now moving ahead children to the next type of disease that is the non communicable diseases now as you can see in this picture the roots uh, represents you know uh, the causes of non communicable diseases and uh, the branches okay as well as the main trunk representing the examples of few non communicable diseases as you can see here non communicable diseases can be caused due to physical inactivity due to smoking unhealthy diets yeah and what are the diseases uh, caused by these uh, the factors now chronic lung diseases can happen cancer diabetes heart diseases okay and there are other non communicable diseases so what is the definition of non communicable diseases non communicable diseases are diseases that are caused due to lack of nutrients in the diet or maybe due to disorder of any body organs which are not functioning properly and these diseases uh, you know do not pass or transmit directly or indirectly from an infected person to uh, you know a healthy person by any means of agents or agency so thus in case of non communicable diseases there are no involvement of germs it is only caused due to lack of any nutrients 
that are made in a disorder of the body organ. A few examples of non-communicable diseases are cancer, diabetes, heart disease, blood pressure, etc. Children, uh, in the previous module, we had learned about the balanced diet. Yeah, that is uh, when all the nutrients are taken in adequate amount. That uh, type of uh, uh, diet is called as a balanced diet. But if there is an insufficient quantity of any of the nutrients in one's diet, then it leads to a disease called as deficiency disease. So let's see what is it. People who eat less than what their body needs become weak and are said to be malnourished. Malnourished means what when they don't uh, they, uh, uh, get the adequate, the right amount of nutrition. So as a result of malnutrition, they suffer from many diseases. And the diseases which are caused by insufficient quantity of nutrients in one's diet such diseases are called as what deficiency diseases yeah now but the deficiency diseases are treatable uh, they can be treated by taking a di diet rich in that particular nutrients whichever nutrients uh, you know the person lacks if the person uh, uh, takes that uh, you know rich diet uh, uh, it can uh, the person can overcome that disease Uh, children, let's uh, view few examples of deficiency diseases. So the first one is marasmus. Now marasmus is a deficiency disease which is caused due to what? The deficiency of both proteins and carbohydrates. And mostly this disease is, uh, is uh, found in, you know, small children. So what are the symptoms of marasmus? Here the growth is very poor. Then the skin becomes dry and wrinkled that's folded then uh, the mental growth is retarded that is it is uh, slowed down as well as uh, one more symptom is of diarrhea and disorder of the digestive system diarrhea is what uh, in which uh, you know uh, there are, there's loose motion and whatever the child eats is not being digested by it, by the, you know, by the digestive system. Now, how, uh, what are the ways to prevent marasmus? So, by eating protein and as well as carbohydrates rich food, this deficiency disease can be overcome. So, what can be eaten? Wheat, soya bean, eggs, sugar, potatoes gram fish meats and nuts now the second deficiency disease is goiter yeah. now goiter is caused due to the deficiency of iodine iodine is what it's a type of mineral now iodine is essential for the production of thyroid hormones okay which are produced by uh, thyroid gland now thyroid hormones are what these are chemicals which are produced by the glands present in a body so thyroid hormone is produced by which gland thyroid gland and it is found primarily uh, means this iodine is found in seawater as well as in the soil of in uh, in the coastal areas now what are the symptoms of goiter if a person is suffering from goiter what will be the symptoms as you can see here in this picture yeah uh, can you see the swelling in the neck region so there's a swelling at the base of the neck why because of the enlargement of the thyroid gland in our neck region there is a gland present for us the thyroid gland so that enlarges in size so there's a swelling in the neck region then coughing then hoarseness hoarseness means what that is change in the voice quality that affects the ability to speak as well as due to the swelling there will be difficulty in swallowing as well as in breathing also now how to prevent goiter the most uh, easiest way to prevent goiter is to 
have iodized salt. What is an iodized salt? That is the salt after refining. Yeah, that is when the impurities have been ref uh, removed from the salt. Uh, small amounts of iodine mineral has been added to it. So that is called as iodized salt, which is, you know, very, very essential for the normal functioning of the thyroid gland. Then apart from that, there are few food items which are rich in iodine. As here we have already learned about salt, the iodized salt, then boiled eggs, bananas, yogurt, dairy products, dried prunes, cranberries, baked potatoes, lobsters, cheese, tuna fish, as well as seaweed. Okay, it's a weed that is, you know, found in the sea, uh, which are edible. Children, the next deficiency disease is anemia. Yeah. So anemia is caused due to the deficiency of iron or the lack of iron in one's diet. So what are the symptoms of anemia? First one is pale skin. That is pale skin means what? Uh, there's an unusual lightness of the skin color when compared with the normal skin color. As well as the nails also becomes flat and pale in color. Then below the eyes, there are dark patches. Then tiredness, yeah. Um, then frequent headaches and breathlessness that is difficulty in breathing. Children, in the present slide, you can see the difference between these two images. Here, uh, these circular thing, disc-like structure, these are the red blood cells. So, a person who is suffering from anemia, there the number of red blood cells decreases and the person is said to be anemic. And this is what a normal person where the number of red blood cells are more. So what happens, um, you know, uh, uh, the mineral iron is required for the synthesis of hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is a, you know, it's a red colored pigment present in the red blood cells, yeah, which is, you know, which provides red color to the blood. Okay, and it also uh, provides energy. So as a result, what happened when the number of red blood cells decreases, the person uh, becomes weak and also as a result, what will happen? Uh, tiredness will be there. Okay. Now, how can we prevent anemia? Anemia can be prevented by eating a healthy diet that is rich in iron. For example, leafy vegetables like spinach, jaggery, cereals, meat, liver, fish, as you can see here in the picture, even bananas, apple, tomatoes. And if a person is highly anemic, then the doctors prescribe iron tablets to them. And the last deficiency disease is what? Is quashiorkar. Now, quashiorkar is a deficiency disease which is caused due to the deficiency or lack of protein in one's diet. So, what are the symptoms of quashiorkar? There is a loss of appetite, then swelling of legs and stomach, enlargement of the liver, and stunted growth. That is, the growth stops. So, how can we overcome this disease by having skimmed milk that is mostly the food items okay which are rich in protein so skimmed milk so what is a skimmed milk that is when all the milk fat has been removed from the milk that a such type of milk is called as the skimmed milk porridge all types of pulses eggs meat and a lot of vegetables so here we come to the end of this lesson. Yeah. So uh, do keep on revising your topics. Now, as you know that the topic disease is quite lengthy. Yeah. And it's a new topic for all of you. So go through it twice and thrice. Yes. And in the next uh, part, yeah, means after this, we'll be writing the question answers related to this lesson. Till then, goodbye. Have a great day. Thank you.